Boom. Hey, fans, viewers, and listeners. Welcome to another exciting episode of Fight Inside Podcast. I'm your co-host for today, Rain Cruz, also known as Ringside Rain, ring announcer for Up Next Fighting. And with me, as always, is Timmy B. Before we get things started, please take a moment to follow and subscribe to us on whatever platform you're hearing hearing me on right now, and be sure to tell your friends about Fight Inside Podcast. Today, we will talk with a hot new prospect on the Canadian East Coast, discuss religion and fighting, and the dreaded Drake curse. So, what are we waiting for? Tim, hit it! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fight Insight Podcast! Yes, today he's an undefeated amateur MMA fighter from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, who won his debut match at Fight League Atlantic 10 a mere three months ago, stopping his opponent in the second round with a devastating body kick. He then went viral with his incredible post-fight speech. True to his word, he's making a quick turnaround and fights this Saturday at FLA 11. You can catch the event live or go to fightleagueatlantic.com to check out the show. Now, listen up, goofs. This man is the next big thing. Rain, please welcome Ben Lee. That was awesome. There he I is. Mean, I really like that. It was cool because ben. I was a little nervous when we we're in the back and you know we're getting ready. You guys were kind of quieter and softer, but man, as soon as the cameras come on, <laughs> the energy's up now. I feel I feel like myself again. There, there you go, Ben. No, you're looking yeah. at. You're looking at the announcer for Up Next Fighting out in California. That is Rain Cruz. She's got the chops, man. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Singing. I, I, you followed me earlier today, and I, I followed you back. I checked the page out. I seen you. Was it was it SummerSlam or was it WrestleMania that you did the announcing for? Oh, it was SummerSlam. It was SummerSlam. Yeah, that looked crazy. Ah, uh, thank you. Where yeah. Was that Where? Um, it was in Las Vegas. And that oh, was shit. 2021. Yeah, they had That's like a awesome. TikTok announcement contest, and I won. Ooh. Yeah, it's amazing. Very cool, Ben. You, my friend, viral sensation, man. You hit my radar very hard and fast after that win. That speech, iconic. Yes. Uh, we will get to talk to you. I do want to give shout outs, though, man. You're all over the place. You're doing media, so I really appreciate your time coming on our show. It, it yeah. is much, much appreciated. Rain. To kind of get the party started, we're going to play a little game with Ben. Uh, this, I, I'm, I'm praying for the best here because, uh, <laughs> Ben, we've got some uh, questions here for you. I'm going to line some of these up. But before we get to the game show, uh, Ben, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, yeah. Uh, so just like a little background, eh? Just kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like who yeah. are you? How did you get into fighting? I mean, you're a young man. So yeah. the, the story, not too long, but who are you? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep her short and sweet. Okay. My name's Ben Lees, for those who don't know me. I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, born and raised. Uh, and yeah, to put it, put it simple, I love to fight. That's really what it is. Uh, I played sports all growing up. I did judo as a kid. I played hockey. Um. I'm a university student right now. I'm actually in computer science right now, working away. So I'm, I'm pretty busy with that at the moment. But nice. uh, yeah, I'm a student. I'm a fight. I love to fight. Uh, pretty funny guy. And that's, that's really it, to be honest. I, you know, I work as a bouncer at a bar. Uh, okay. And I train a lot. Really, MMA is probably, that's my main thing right now. That's my main thing. I, lo I love to fight. And nice I love man. talking about fighting too. That's really what it is for me. And when did you and when did you know that you were going to do this? Because it's one thing for us to all love mixed martial arts. It's one thing for us to all train, but to actually get in the cage and do it, it takes another level of animal. So when did you know that hey man, I'm going to do this? Honestly, I can't really pinpoint it cuz I've always just had the fight in me. Like when I was playing hockey, I was always trying to fight someone. I used to get into fights at school quite a bit. But the thing is, when I get, I'll talk about fighting in school for a minute. I didn't, uh, I was never one to start the fight. You know, I, I was a really nice kid. I was a really sweet kid. And people would try and mess with me at school. And I just had explosive anger. So when people would fuck with me at school, I would just, I'd put up with it for about a day or so. And then I would just eventually just snap. 
and just whoop someone's ass. So I just had to start channeling that into martial arts. I've always loved martial arts. I always loved fighting. And that's why I'm here now. Like, I'm not an overly angry person anymore. I think that's because I just get to let it out a lot. Like, if, if I just, I get to channel that energy. I just love to fight. That's really what it is. <laughs> All right, Ben. Well, I mean, you got to watch our past episodes on the Fight Insight podcast because you'll hear about how Rain slaps people around too. <laughs> in school and at birthday parties you know rain she doesn't look it but she's a killer all right rain we've got the game show here the reason why i had to switch quickly to that question i didn't have my props ready so i was doing that quickly ben so we squeeze that in all right rain we've got a game show here let's see how ben does ben these are four questions they all relate to your name ben so these are all regarding famous bens oh god rain question ready? number one <laughs> all right question number one this company made, hang on, I don't even know if I can pronounce or if I can say it. Sweaty balls, sweaty balls, and American dream ice cream flavors. Oh, sweaty okay. balls and American dream ice cream flavors. It, and it's a company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, the only ice cream I can think of with the name Ben and is Ben and Jerry's, but. Boom. Hey! Ben and they Jerry's. Made sweaty balls. What the fuck? Sweaty is balls. Ice ben, that is real, my friend. If I'm this show had some sweaty balls, man, right, after this if, fight. If this if this show had any budget, Ben, I would be mailing you some sweaty balls right now. Let me get some That's... sweaty balls in my mouth ASAP. <laughs> ASAP. Rain. As soon as possible. <laughs> Rain, question number two. He's one for one. All right, question number two. This Ben used to chase candidly cloud women around on TV every week. This is really friggin' hard. We're going back to like early 80s. He's oh, an man. English comedian. He used to chase Ooh, I want, around. I want like to be half... too young for that. I think I might be too young, guys. I'm only 20. I was born in 2002. <laughs> yeah, god dang it. But it's he's oh, such a funny. I know, I know I'm old, but he's like such a weird, like crazy kind of perverty guy i thought like maybe ben would know no offense i'm gonna have to look into that that looks pretty cool yeah it's it? it's called the benny hill show benny is, hill show yeah it is ridiculous it, it would be canceled immediately in today's day and age mm -hmm. ben but that's a very famous ben benny hill all right rain that i knew that was a loser <laughs> question three all right, number three. This Ben is an animated hero who can transform into various alien creatures. <laughs> I Ben 10, baby. Ben oh, 10. There, see, I went for an early 80s and then I said, okay, well, this guy knows this one. That's Ben 10. There we go. I, I used to love that show as a little kid. That, I was watching it all the time. There you go. Did and you even believe? lately, like they FLA released a video of me lately and, uh, at the end of it, I was like, Ben 10, baby, Ben 10. Ben. And then people were <laughs> posting on their stories a picture of my face with the uh, the Ben 10 theme song playing. And I was oh. just saying this the other week in, in my in the DMs. I was I was talking to uh, David Chapman, another fighter. And uh, I was just talking about how I got to start watching Ben 10 again just because there. of the, the stories and stuff. There you go. There you go. Uh, Rain, he's doing well. Two for three. Yeah. Last question. This is yeah. this one is a tough one, Ben. Think about this answer before you do it. There is only one right answer. Okay. One right answer. Okay. Last question. Who will go down in history as the greatest Ben in MMA history? Ben Roffel, Ben Askren, or Ben Lees? Well, you know, it's more than just a simple answer, right? Because I just got to take it one fight at a time. I'm, obviously, in my mind, I'm the greatest ever. You know, that's how it, that's how it's got to be. But also, I'm, I'm, I had one MMA fight. It lasted five minutes. I whooped ass. I'm about to go whoop ass this weekend. When they book me again for the next fight, I'll whoop ass again. And if I keep whooping ass, we'll see how far we can go, right? But, but right now... As an amateur fighter with one win, I got to keep it humble, you know? So uh, we'll see. 
stay tuned for that answer. I'll, I'll let me get back to you in about 20 years on that answer. We'll see. When, when sure. the dust is settled, yeah. we'll, we'll see how I ended up. Yeah, yeah. We'll be here, Ben. And here it is. There's you and two other famous Ben. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. I kind of look like a mix between the two of them. <laughs> you're a clone. You're like a you're a merged clone yeah. of Rothwell and uh, Askren. Ben, uh, man, how are you handling it all? Like you're a young man, but I see you like of all fighters and stuff like that. I see you around a lot. Like I see you doing podcast shows. I see you being featured on on the FLA show, mm. right? Being interviewed by John Morgan. So I mean. Here you are, like you said, a one and zero amateur, but you're getting a lot of heat. It's definitely from the the in ring interview that you did that made people recognize who you are now. Uh, how are you handling it all? Are you are you taking it in stride? I I handle it good, to be honest. Uh, I ran a fight club in high school, so I, I'm no I'm no stranger to like people talking shit about me and people hyping me up at the same time. Like I've I've been getting a little bit of attention for a while now. But this is beyond any attention I've ever seen. Mm. And honestly, I don't know. I just, I think I'm just built for it, to be honest. I just enjoy it. I enjoy talking to different people. I en I'm enjoying talking to you guys now. I, I enjoy, I'm, I like entertaining people. I really, like, if I can get everybody going, if I can get them hyped up and laughing, and that's, that's just kind of who I am. Like, you know, my greatest skill at any job I've ever been at it wasn't my capability in that job. It was my ability to make everybody laugh while I was at that job. That's, mm. that's what it really I bring to the table. It's just, I just, I just love entertaining people. So I've, I don't really know, to be honest. I just take it one day at a time. And uh, yeah, that's really it, to be honest. I just, I love it. I, I, I love the attention. He's bringing more attention to my fighting and stuff. And, yeah, I'm gonna keep on kicking ass and taking names and saying yeah. funny shit in the meantime. Yeah. Now, now speaking of that, saying funny shit, Rain. When we had Derek Clark from Fight League Atlantic on, we I played this clip, Ben, and I don't know. I don't think this was your event, but this was in the background, and this was this gentleman uh, here. Take a trick of this. I implore you guys to act properly. There's going to be kids coming here. There's going to be wives, grandmothers, and that. They don't want to hear all your vulgarity and all that. Yes. Oh, Ben, I heard, I heard through the grapevine, perhaps you got in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. It, you know, I got to give the commission some credit here. Yeah. They gave me, they gave me a nice stern warning. I got to, I, the first one's free. It's just like buying drugs for the first time, right? It's, <laughs> The first one was free. So I might have blown up a little bit when, yeah. you know, the post fight. I might have swore a little too much. I did say sorry, commission, before I dropped about 50 F bombs. But oh, that's nice of you. I apologize. I've made a prepayment on the, uh, <laughs> on the, on the uh, swearing. But I'm trying to keep it PG now. Yeah. That's really what it is now. I mean, we'll see. It, do I think it's, I understand why. They have these rules set in place because if you know the sport's kind of on thin ice as it is, it's new. Uh, yeah. You got to, in order to be sanctioned, you got to have some standards that need to be met. Mm. But by the same token, the 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 women, the children, the grandmothers who don't want to hear the vulgarity are also sitting in the crowd, watching us kick each other and punch each other in the head, knocking each other out, and we're out here fighting for fucking free, okay? If anything, that last fight, I went in the hole probably like 700 bucks for that last fight. Oh, Just at paying least. for hotels and gas mm. and my gym membership and my food and all this shit. So it's like I'm giving my heart and soul for free to entertain everybody. And I'm going to do my best not to swear. I want to make this clear. That being said, I put so much fucking shit in all the other – every fighter puts so much shit into these camps. Some of them get knocked the fuck out. Sorry, I'm yelling in the mic. No, no. <laughs> and some of them do the knock and the fuck out. And it's like we're allowed to watch someone get knocked unconscious and brought out on a stretcher. But if I say fuck, it feels fucking great to win this fight. That's that's a bigger problem than I was at a, an event. One guy was unconscious for like four minutes. They had to stretcher his dead body out of the fucking <laughs> ring. 
and we had to wait 45 minutes for the ambulance to come for the fights to keep going. So that's okay for the women and children and the grandmas. Yeah. But if I, if Ben Lee's the fucking chubby kid, it says, uh, says an F-bomb, it's a problem, right? Or any other guy says the F-bomb. Yeah. That being said, I see both sides of it. I'm just cutting weight right now, so I'm a little cranky. <laughs> that's all it is, really. I'm like, I, I understand. Yeah, but also, ben. I'm gonna I'm gonna make fun of it too at the same time. Yeah, it is funny, man. It, it's very polarizing. It's very you can see it because as a business and Fight League Atlantic, and they want to go mainstream, and we want to get in there, and we we need crowds. You know what I mean? Like we we need crowds. We need local crowds. If you're out there, and and this this saying this to everybody that's watching, millions and millions of people watching, because Ben Lease is here. Get your ass out to Nova Scotia this Saturday and go watch him live. Right? Like, get your ass out there. He promises not to swear. Maybe. He's going to promise to try not to swear. That's where we're at, I feel. Yeah. It sometimes it just comes out. Yeah. As as we've seen there, I was very calm for this whole 15 minute period and I blew up for like three minutes. But (laughs) we should be good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I promise to do my absolute best. I'm like Trump right now. It's like, I promise we're going to build a wall to Mexico. (laughs) No, I'm just, I'm going to do my best not to swear. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to, I mean, what are they going to do? They're not going to find you money. You're, you're an amateur making I'm zero dollars. I'm already broke, guys. Yeah. You're going to fucking beat me up. You're going to kick me <laughs> while I'm down. Yeah. They're going to bleed I'm taking brain you. damage for free to yeah. make people money. And, I, and I'll do it again. I'll do it every weekend. I love it. Yeah. But, you know, let's give me a little bit of grace. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking for free, basically. That's yeah. basically what I'm doing. Well, I'm definitely not clipping that statement out. But, yeah, I got, I got what you're saying. We got this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Rain, Rain. Uh, Ben, I could have you on here for like a good six hour podcast. So we'll do that after on a week when you're not, you know, cutting weight and just getting ready to go because you seem like a fantastic dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Um, Ben, before, you know, before we get to your last words, my last question, Rain, anything that you want to ask Mr. Ben Lease? You know, I'm curious, Ben, you've mentioned whooping people's asses you know, a few times during this interview. Yes. I'm wondering who your favorite uh, wrestler is. Oh, or do like you have wrestling? one? Yeah, or do you have one? Are you a fan of wrestling? I used to be into it when I was really young. And uh, my favorite wrestler was Edge. Okay. Oh, oh it's from, he's from uh, Toronto. Toronto, yeah. Canada, baby. He'd always get in the, the corner of the turnbuckle and he'd start splitting his hair. And he's lining <laughs> up, getting ready. And then he'd run and hit him. Yeah. And you'd walk out to uh, Alter Bridge there. What's that song? Metal Ingus. Uh-huh. Alter Bridge. Yeah. I used to get so hyped up back in like third grade watching that. Dude, I love that guy. He's in Toronto. Rated R superstar. I had his t-shirt when I was a kid, man. I used to love that guy. Um, all right. Ben, before I get to my last question, is there anything that you wanted to say to the fans, viewers, and listeners of the podcast? <sighs> Thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, I'm a little low energy right now because I'm cutting weight, but you know, the body may be a little weak right now, but the spirits are high. And honestly, I'm, I'm ready to rock. I've, I've been ready to fight for a little minute now. I could have fought 10 times over the last 10 weeks. Like I could fight every weekend if it came down to it. And you know, this one, I got a bigger, badder opponent. Uh, the stakes are higher. There's more attention. And just if if you want to see a good fight, I said this last time, I promised action last time. And within the first three seconds, my opponent was concussed. Didn't know where he was. So when I tell you that I'm going to go out there and do something, I'm going to fucking do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, it's all right now. Everybody watching when this comes out on Thursday or whenever it comes out. Yeah, I promise. I promise action at the very least. And I promise victory as well for Ben Lee's. Action and victory. Beautiful, Ben. I glitched out for a second there. Did you see that I was frozen or no? I, I was no, yeah. I was checking myself. No? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I don't know whether the passion of your speech, Ben, just like froze my brain for a second. But I broke the internet. Ben, I am gonna be there. I am flying out on Friday, so I will see you there at the event on nice. Saturday, my friend. I will be there. I'll be in the crowd or I'll be doing something. 
but I'm going to be there at Fight League Atlantic 11. Everybody, please go to fightleagueatlantic.com. If you cannot be there in person, it's in Picto, Nova Scotia. I learned that it's Picto and not Picto, Ben. So don't let's don't get that wrong. You'll get in trouble. Picto, Nova Scotia at the Hector Arena. So that is this Saturday. We will all be there to uh, cheer on all the fights. But Ben, I cannot wait to see you live, my friend. I'm very excited. Ben, before I let you go, I have one question. It's a question that my mother used to ask me almost every day growing up. And I'm going to ask it to you, Mr. Ben Lease, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? Oh, I like that one. Um, I'd say I'm about a 9. I'm about a nine happy, ten honestly nine or ten happy. All right. I, I I put myself at a nine, just because if I was fully content, if I was fully content, I wouldn't strive for anything. You know what I mean? I wouldn't get out of bed if I was full, completely fulfilled. You got to have a little bit of hunger in you just to get out and do stuff. But you know, I I was watching a clip the other day and it was talking about uh, the part in your brain that f- feels anxiety is very close to the part of your brain that feels gratitude. And uh, they say practicing gratitude will rid you of any anxiety. So, you know, some days when I get anxious, I get worried about stuff, I get revving high. I just get appreciative. And I find it really cools me down a lot. Like right now, I'm cutting weight, I'm hungry, I'm ready to fight. I'm fucking, I'm at school all day, doing homework all day. That's crazy. But I'm just grateful to be here. I, I, I got two feet in a heartbeat. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm 20 years old. I have a family that loves me. I have a loving girlfriend. I love my brother. I, I love my friends. I, I, I am surrounded just – I'm surrounded by a lot of love. And I have a great gym, great – there's so many people in my life. It's almost a problem of, of trying to see everybody because I care about so many people. And I really feel they care for me. So gratitude. Gratitude is the biggest thing that, you know, I'm, you asked me on a scale of 1 to 10, I made it a big, long-winded question. No, no, uh, this is this 9 is out of one. 10. 9 out of 10. And really what it comes down to is gratitude, just being grateful, just finding something. There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be random things that come up. There's going to be inconveniences. But I'm just – I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be fighting again. I'm grateful to be talking to you guys. I'm, I'm grateful, like, the spotlight, the getting in the ring. Regardless of what happens, I mean, make no mistake. Regardless of what happens, I'm fucking winning. That's number one. But number two, if if I die tomorrow, I'm gonna die a happy guy because of gratitude. And sometimes I I stray away from that and forget that. But that's really what I've been focusing on this week. In times of struggle, that's when you need to be grateful the most. You gotta find something to be grateful for. So that, I'll close with that. It's gratitude. I don't know how this 20-year-old man who's in school, still doing homework, training to kick ass on the weekend rain, is so poetic in his speaking. At 20 years old, I can barely mumble a sentence together if someone asks me. (laughs) And he's cutting weight, too. He's cutting weight, too. And and cutting weight. He's depleted. I mean, this dude is crazy. Ben, it is an absolute honor and a pleasure to meet you, my friend. You are, uh, for those listening on... For those listening on audio only, you are at Ben Lease, L-E-E-C-E-O-2 on Instagram. Go follow you there. That's the best place to follow you and give you support and love. Yes. Yeah. It, I guess I messed up when I told you. It's uh, Ben underscore Lease O2. Oh, my but God. But if you type in Ben Lease on Instagram, I'm a hard guy to miss. The profile pic, I'll give you a little preview of it. Me, no shirt on, <laughs> arms wide open, just like Creed. Arms <laughs> wide open. <laughs> Arms wide open. You can't miss it. And All right. Yeah. Let's redo this. Thank, thank there it is. At Ben underscore Lease 02. Ben Lease 01. Get the hell out of here. Give the Instagram handle back to the there's true Mr. Australian, ben Lease. There's an Australian musician named Ben Lease. Every time I, I remember as a kid, I Googled myself on uh, or I YouTube myself. And I'm like, this music would come up. Like, yeah, I think it's an Australian or English guy named Ben Lease too, but. <laughs> All right, Ben, I won't keep you because you're going off to teach kids right now. I, I got to go teach the kids class, yeah. And yeah, I'm going to be on time too. I'll okay. probably oh, be a minute or two. That's awesome. Before. All right, all right. Get yeah, going I live to do right that. there by the gym. So I'm, I'm only like three or four minutes from the gym. So. All right, all right. Get going to do that, Ben. Thank right. you so much for spending the time, my friend. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on Saturday. I'll uh, see you before. I'll see you after the fights, my friend. We'll oh, hang yes. out. Dude, pleasure to meet you. You're, you're a great pleasure young man. Focus. 
a great, great young man. Ben, all the best to you. We will see you soon. Oh, yeah. Shake his hand. Yeah. Shake nice his hand. to meet right. you. Good luck this Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on, too, by the way. I'm sorry for the swearing. I, I know I made a made a couple bad jokes. You can cut them out if you need to. No, no, no. They're all staying in, and I'm highlighting them. Yeah. Goodbye, Ben. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. That is Mr. Ben Lease. What a cool dude, no? Yeah, he's cool, really funny. And, you know, you know, he's very young, but, like, he... He, I feel like he knows like the value of, of life, you know, just to be grateful and appreciating what you have versus seeing what you don't have. It's crazy. It's crazy at 20 years old. Yeah. To have that kind of maturity and composure yet still have the youthful optimism and spunk and right. Like he's got that yeah. fire, that passion of youth, but he's got the maturity level as well. I like this kid. I like yeah. this kid. I wish him best. Obviously, I'm going to go see him fight on Saturday. So I do hope that he does well. Um, but win, lose, or draw, that, that, this kid is a star. If this kid sticks with it, what did he say he's doing in school? Computer, computer science? science? So he's computer like a computer science. science nerd? Like, I didn't want to say yeah. that. I don't want to get in trouble. Have, <laughs> him, have him slap me around. But like, this guy's a computer <laughs> science nerd. And he's friggin' kicking ass. Like, that's crazy. Good for him. I'm, I'm so happy for this dude. Um, Rain, it is wonderful to have you back. You missed a week, but now here you are back. So thank you for coming back. Uh, people were worried. They said, we're never watching this podcast again. If we're going to come back. So it was, it was very bad. Uh, friends of the podcast update. If you're here because of Mr. Ben Lee, thank you so much. Click subscribe, go follow us, do all that stuff. Leave some comments for Mr. Ben Lee. I know he's going to be looking at this. So please do send him some love. Uh, friends of the podcast update. We always update you on what's going on. RageWorks Podcast Network. You can go find us there at RageWorksNetwork.com. They've always been a big supporter of us. You can find other cool audio podcasts as well to listen to. Uh, I interviewed a girl a while ago. Her name is Manuela Marconetto. She's an Italian fighter. She is the butcher's daughter. She fights September 30th, PFL Europe. So very excited mm -hmm. to see her there, fight there before PFL goes out of business. Let's go, Manuela. Uh, and then the raging panda, Julia Avila, she was a guest, oh boy, long, long time ago, Rain, after we interviewed her, she was supposed to fight. Now, I'm not going to hold her to this, but she was going to put our logo on her banner or something mm -hmm. like that. She had said she was going to. I'm not bringing that up now. But that fight got canceled because she got pregnant. Okay. She's now had a baby. I believe her baby's name is Eris, one of the cutest babies on the planet. She's now coming back. The baby is only like maybe one. Like she's making, she's turned this baby around. Uh, pun intended, I guess. But she's turned it around. And she is, <laughs> she is coming back to the UFC. And she's taking on Misha Tate. Uh, I don't know when the date is. I did not write it down. But she's fighting Misha Tate. That's a freaking huge fight. Wow. So that is crazy for the Raging Panda. I love her. She's amazing. Uh, she's always a great fighter. And this is a perfect fight. Rain, when she got pregnant, she was like kind of like right there close to title contention. Mm -hmm. So then you go away, you take your maternity leave, you come back and you get a high profile fight against former champion Misha Tate. Amazing fight for her. And uh, I wish her all the best. And that's coming up. That was just announced. And then, of course, Fight League Atlantic 11 is this Saturday. I will be there. I'm going to be helping out doing some stuff with Fight League Atlantic 11. And the night before is Fight League Atlantic Kumite 5. That's a BJJ night of uh, jujitsu fights and a tournament or something's going on there. I cannot wait. I'm going to be there as well. So I'm going to be spending my weekend over with Fight League Atlantic. First time ever to the Maritimes in Nova Scotia. I'm very, very excited. So uh, my, my mom's family is all from Newfoundland. So I've never been there my whole life. But uh, Rain, none of these places mean anything to you. But it's all East Coast Canada. So I'll Somewhere be out there. there Somewhere in Canada. Yeah, don't worry. It's all the same, right? It's all the same. We have an Ontario, but California. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's all what's going on with Friends of the Podcast up update so there's lots going on there uh don't forget that of course Britain Hart Rain she was my co-host last week she subbed in for you she is the BKFC strawweight champion she was my co-host and uh she is fighting this Saturday so or Yay. this Friday this Friday she fights okay. defend defending her title so of course we are uh happily supporting Britain Hart of course she's gonna go kick ass that's not a question uh a couple of things that we're gonna talk about Rain so one thing that's just silly is the Drake curse. Do you know about the Drake curse? No, I actually don't. All right. 
I don't, I don't. I didn't study too much for this rain or anything. I, mean, I don't know a lot of Drake songs to begin with. Yeah, I do not like Drake. Drake, is, I believe Drake is from Toronto. People are going to get I mad that I do so. not know that. I know he's a big fan of the Raptors uh, because he's. I think he's always at the game. Sure. Yeah. He's always at the game. So there's Mr. Uh, Drake. Now, the problem with the Drake curse is, and for those that don't know, he bets big money all the time. And he loses like 90% of the time. He bets like 500000 on Israel Adesanya. He'll bet like a million dollars on whatever. And he posts his, uh, like, what do you call it? Like the slips? Like the bet slips? Uh-huh. And like, it's very consistent he loses. Like, this dude is the worst pick possibly of all time. Well, the good thing is he has a lot of money to lose. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I will say, controversy, I will say that a big part of me believes that he's not really making those bets and that, like, the company mm. says, hey, dude, post this and we'll pay you blah, blah, blah dollars, but it's just going to make it look like you're spending big money. So you just pick whatever. Like, there's no way this guy can be losing millions of dollars on fights all the time. Like, I don't know how much musicians make, but like you just have that money to just blow. I mean, he's a big deal, I think, in the music industry. So I figured, you know, five hundred thousand dollars is nothing for him, you know. And then I, again, I think now that you brought up that it could be like a some sort of a you know uh, under the table you know sponsorship type of thing. Yeah. Hey, can you act like you know you're you're doing this bet? on our platform yeah yeah because yeah. to encourage other people to do the same thing i mean you know and he's not losing anything it yeah. just looks like he is losing something but he's not or winning blah 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 or winning. Brings, yeah right um that said dear drake please go vote on the joe rogan podcast get what i'm saying there ring vote on a joe rogan podcast because then the joe rogan podcast will fail Oh. And and we will be the greatest podcast. <laughs> like we will be the greatest. So yeah, no, uh, Drake, please come on our podcast. I would like to talk to you about your MMA fascination and about like your crazy bets. And also, if you have money just to throw away, please mail some to me, and I will, you know, utilize it. You know what I mean? Like just, just like, yeah. If he's bored, he just wants to dispose of his money. Why not? Like send yeah. it to you. You're in Canada. Yeah, we'll just pre- yeah. The mail it's only gonna cost you like forty nine cents to mail it to me. Yeah. You, you mail me a hundred grand. You can pretend you bet on one of your lousy picks, and then when you lose it, I'm happy, and no difference to you. You're gonna lose the money anyways. You lose every week. So yeah, rain. That that's my call out. Is dear Drake, please come on the podcast and please give me some free money. That's what I would like. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Rain, um, let's see here. Last time you were on the podcast, we kind of ran out of time, but I had asked you for all your top swear words and we were going to rank them in order. Oh God. (laughs) So that we could, so that we could see like, what are the words that you can say on TV? What are the ones you can't say on TV? Right. Because at the time there was the thing going on when the guy said the bad words and the internet was going crazy and then it was bleeped out, blah, blah, blah. Dana White is like, I don't care what these people say. Just they can say whatever they want, right? Similar to like what we just did with Ben Lease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Forget that, Rain. There's a new drama in town. So what I need from you now, Rain, you're going to rank religions Mm -hmm. from best to worst. Best to worst. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. No. Rain, do you know what happened? I think you saw it online, yeah. right? You yeah. saw where this guy hang. So let I me just. Actually, play- I was actually watching the prelims when I, you know. Uh, okay. So, so I actually saw this fight. Okay. So you saw this and what happened? Okay. So I'm going to just play this brief clip. And guys, this is Bryce Mitchell. He's a, you know, legendary UFC, UFC fighter, Arkansas, Arkansas. He's the guy with the camo shorts. He yelled it for camo shorts forever. They finally gave it to him. He's the guy that believes the earth is flat, believes that there's no such thing as gravity. He's a, he's a very interesting fellow. Here's him at the end of his fight where he wins. Uh, this is just this past weekend, and here he is. There's a, this is a very brief clip so that we don't get uh, taken down. Tremendous performance, my brother. Please, my damn price. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Thug Nasty. So at the end of his fight, Rain, he's <laughs> at the beginning of his fight, he comes out and he's carrying the Bible and he's holding it up and, you know, carrying his Bible. The internet mm-hmm. ablaze with it. Before his fight even starts, they're posting things going, 
what's this guy doing? Blah, blah. It was not complimentary. I'll tell you for most of the stuff that I saw, it was not complimentary about him bringing the Bible in. Then when he wins, he starts saying some stuff and he says after like his interview kind of is finished. And then he goes, I'd like to pray with Dan Ige, who uh, he's talking about donating money to Hawaii and blah, blah, for the people, et cetera, et cetera. But then you see Mike Bisping go, uh, and they just kind of like walks away. So my question to you, Rain, is did they pull the mic because Michael Bisping was eh on it? Because the producers in his ear told him, get the hell out of Dodge? Or because time just ran out and they're just like, I don't have time to go through this. What would be your pick if you had to guess why the mic was pulled and there would be no prayer? Um, for me, honestly, I think it's because of time. Um, if you kind of see the pattern of every um, post-fight interview, it usually lasts around two, three minutes max. And I think the interview was already long to begin with. And that part of when he asked, hey, can you know we pray or whatever, I think um, at that point it just ran out of time. And I don't think it's um, Mike's call anyway to let him keep going because there's always going to be someone in his ear telling him, Hey, wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. I mean, for all we know, he's been told already, Hey, wrap it up, wrap it up. Cause it's going on long. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's, it's something we're in. They just didn't want them to do that because I think if they just took their time, like right away, like, you know, this is me just thinking, you know, time wise, if um, Bryce had said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to use my interview time to pray with Dan right away. I think they would have let the, let them do it. Oh, that's interesting. You All know, right. So like they used up the time already. Um, and uh, like to me, I, you know, TV time is precious. Airtime is precious. Um, praying is also precious. But what I'm, I think in this situation, I think if he had said, hey, you know, I'm going to use my interview time to pray with my brother, I think they would have let it, you know, let that happen because that's going to be their airtime. Very, very interesting, Rain. And then that would be good advice to Mr. Bryce Mitchell, uh, mm -hmm. who, of course, I'm trying to get on this podcast. I think I've been trying forever. Mm -hmm. But um, that's very interesting. I like it. And very interesting advice to Bryce Mitchell, because it's like, hey, next time, dude, if that's your goal, right, if that's the message you want to get out, if that's how you want to use your time on the mic, you got to get to that ASAP. Yeah. You can't be leaving that till the end. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, hey, if you're going to thank people, you better say your wife first, right? Don't run the risk that you're like, thank you to my team. <laughs> thank you to my training partners. And then they go, okay, we got to go. And you're like, but what about my wife? You know, like, no, no, get that wife in there. Uh, it's funny, Rain, I will go to our fans. I posted it online. So I was asking the fans before just with an open question, like, hey, why do you think the mic was pulled? It was very funny the way Mike Bissing goes, uh, and then he pulls it away, right? Like, he... He's like, it's like his brain like pauses for a sec. But so I, I, I put it out to the fans and we, I generally got those three kind of things. And then I, I put a poll out saying, okay, so was it that Bisping felt uncomfortable? Was it the production team told Bisping to get out of there? Or was it that time simply ran out? You say time simply ran out. That got 23% of our votes. Second place was Bisping felt uncomfortable personally. Mm -hmm. That got 27%, but 50% of the votes votes felt that the production team told Bisbing get the hell out of there. I don't agree with that. So again, and that's not saying that time is running out. They're saying, hey, we can't have this on air. You got to get out. Interesting, especially because the UFC has always said, hey, you talk about whatever the hell you want, racism, yeah. racist comments, whatever, sw swear words, whatever, like, you know, talking about their heritage or whatever, go for it. They've never put anything around speech. Like it's always been freedom of speech for the fighters. Dana's yeah. come right out and said it. So when it comes to religion, I don't know, guys, like to the fans watching, right? Or to the fans on the poll, I don't know. I don't know that it's a production team. But here's something, Rain. Remember, UFC does not allow you to bring out flags. Uh -huh. They don't allow you to bring out your country flags because of controversy and blah, blah, blah. So my next question to you, Rain, is if you're not allowed to bring out your flag... And you're not allowed to do anything. You're, you're like you have to wear the venom gear. You can't wear your own hats. You can't wear mm -hmm. a, you can't wear a Freddy mask or a Jason mask. Right? You can't do anything. Should you be allowed to bring out the Bible or any holy book? Let's say so you don't get 
targeted by Christians, right? Are, should you be allowed, <laughs> should you be allowed to bring out any like religious item on your way to the ring if you can't bring a country flag? Not 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 should you be able to bring anything, but understanding you can't bring out a country flag. Is yeah, religious thing any different? I mean, I don't think um, I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with him, you know, holding out the Bible when he um, I, I'm trying to recall if he was holding the Bible when he was walking out. I know he held the Bible when Joe Martinez was announcing him. And I remember yes. looking, I was like, what is he holding? And then I could see, you know, like yeah. um, it, it was the Bible. Yeah, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Honestly, I. I found it funny that his nickname was Thug Nasty and he was all. <laughs> I, was like, I was expecting more of like a biblical nickname. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The preacher's, the preacher's son, you know? you know. I felt like, wait, is this like the, you know, I know it's like, um, it's not like wrestling we're in, that's like his character, but to me, it's like, yeah. um, you know, if he's trying to represent like the Bible and uh, I felt like the nickname would be more of like, you know, biblical. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I don't think it should be banned. I think it's a, it's just you know freedom of, ex of expression. Um, I don't know if it's something that offends people. Um, personally, it didn't offend me. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I just found it funny that his nickname wasn't like <laughs> biblical, considering that he was yeah. getting rival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I I don't think there, there, it should be banned. Um, I know like the country flags, I honestly don't, you don't think that like, that's, that's, that's weird too. Yeah. No, yeah. That was weird. That it was, it, that it's banned. Cause it's like, to me, it's like, it's representing, it's the fighters representing where they came from, like their yeah. identity. Well, and, uh, you, and they have the badge on their clothing that shows what country they're from. Yeah. So it's so weird that I can have this badge, but I can't bring the flag. Yeah. I and it's know. like, you know, to me, they're already wearing like you know the the gear to fight right and they're mm -hmm. the only way for them to express who they are is to either hold their flags whatever flag they want to represent or like what bryce did you know he was holding his bible um god if i'm a fighter i'd bring my dog i would hold my dogs <laughs> but but you know i feel like it's it's a nice to me personally, it, it's nice to see what the fighters stand for, what they represent, yeah. aside from fighting inside the cage. Well, that's the thing. That's the weird thing about the UFC, right? With, with their whole uniform spiel and their their whole, um, you know, the restriction on what you're allowed to do and how much you're allowed to personalize. And that goes for like all of fight week, right? Like you have to wear the Venom clothing and blah, blah, blah. So um, it is weird because when you when you look at up next fighting and the people come mm -hmm. out and uh, this week I was watching the BKFC event. Dang it. BKFC puts on, I, I really do think BKFC has the best entrances in all of combat sports right now. Like they've got the very cool Titan Trons and the, and the lights and the flashing and the, the people come out in crazy costume. Like the one guy uh, on, on last weekend, his name is uh, Mark, the juggernaut hunt. He walks out and there's some guy in a giant juggernaut costume from the X-Men. Like, it's like a giant cosplay. This guy just walks behind. It's crazy. Like, it's just such a show. I feel like it adds so much to mm -hmm. the to the whole spectacle of it, right? Like yeah. the UFC, I know they want it to be professional. They want it to look like a professional sport and all that. But kind of to Ben's, to Ben Lee's uh, comments, like, okay, but we're here to watch me kill someone, right? Like, and you're mad that I swear or you're mad that I wear, you know, a, a, a Freddy mask or a Jason, right? like you're like, I can't do that, but I can go in and murder someone right after. Like, it's not a professional sport in that vein, right? Like yeah. this is combat sport in the end. So uh, very interesting, but uh, we will see like kind of where that goes. I'll tell you, Rain, the internet hands down was bashing this dude talking about uh, bryce bryce yeah. yeah they were hands down insulting him mad at him you know cri criticizing him leave that stuff at home who cares about that blah 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 right like people now mind you of course people normally come online just to bitch about stuff but i was kind of surprised that it was so aggressive against him 
Yeah, I feel bad because I think he's he. I don't think he meant any harm. No, mm, no. But he's trying to get his views across. But again, pe- other people say other views on other things, and it's kind of okay. But you are right, Rain. Second week in a row where my co-host just totally destroys me on an argument and a topic. But you are <laughs> you are a hundred percent right. If this is what you want to do, start it at the beginning of your speech. Oh, yeah, when they, yeah. yeah, when they say, "Hey, Bryce, great fight." Uh, how do you think that went? Hold on, Bisbing. Here's what I want to say, but and then go into it because yeah. that would be because that would be interesting. Because then if right on minute one, Bisbing is like, "All right, we got to go," and walks out, you'd be like, "Oh shoot!" Now there's something. But you're right; he had already used up the two minutes. It was ending. It's a weird time to do it. Yeah, and I feel like everything that uh, Bryce had said in his interview. Yeah. Um, you know. I feel like there's parts of it that he could, you know, I guess, turn into his prayer. I mean, I don't think all of it, but like, you know, I think there's parts in that interview yeah. and he could have just started praying and, you know, still expressed his uh, belief or send the message that he wants to send to yeah. everyone. Yeah. Because especially the Hawaii thing and all that, he could have just, mm-hmm. he could have just ingrained that all within it. Right. Um, yeah. You're right. And, and a lot of what he was saying was kind of, prayer ish right yeah so, anyways as always rain people listening just be nice for goodness sakes right like much to like what ben lease was talking about right if you're feeling anxious and whatever think about being grateful think about nice things that's what gets us through the day and uh his you know his knowledge of the anatomy of the brain i'm gonna trust him i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fact check that rain but i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna i'm gonna believe that this dude is right uh i don't know smart <laughs> smart kid uh rain I will say next week on the podcast, normally I announce this before, next week on the podcast, Rain, as far as I know, the crippler Chris Lieben, UFC legend, now MMA judge and referee, referee? first ever pro referee event was with Rain Cruz at UNF, and he was his first ever, I believe, first ever professional judging was last weekend at that UFC event with Bryce Mitchell. We have him lined up, Rain. Woohoo! I'm excited. I'm like 85% sure. So, you know, we're looking good for next week for Chris Lieben, which is crazy, Rain, because I know him as an insane lunatic. And you know him as this nice gentleman referee. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Like that is so crazy, but um, no better time, you know, to have him on and it, and then uh, to have him on. I didn't know he was going to be a judge at the UFC. I was just doing yeah. it. Because, I was just doing it because he was a referee, and because we've been talking about like, hey, you know, pro fighters need to get more involved in the in the authority of sports as judges and referees, blah blah. And then boom, it gets announced that he's the freaking judge at UFC last weekend. I had already messaged him before saying, hey, can you come on? And he was like, yeah, okay. And then all of a sudden the news got announced that he's going to be the judge. I was like, oh crap, like, you know? And then so I waited until Sunday to kind of follow back up with him. I'm Uh like, hey dude, like we're still good for like a week. And he's like, yeah, we're good. That's awesome. Super timely, super timely. So I'm very happy. Um, Yeah, so I'm excited. So Chris leaving hopefully next week. Rain, uh, that is all we really have to talk about. I know that you had to kind of get going. Um, We got through, Ben was on a tight schedule as well, so we don't want to extend that too long. I feel like we talked about some good things. You didn't rank your religions from best to worst. worst worst. (laughs) We'll do that another time. We'll do that another time. That's fine. We'll get canceled another time. Uh, (laughs) Anything that you have going on? Is there anything in the world of Rain Cruise? Are we, do you have an event planned? What's going on? Oh, I just want to promote uh, Up Next Fighting. Uh, They have um, Club UNF on September 28th. Yes. Um, That's next. No, that's this week already. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Now, yeah. Wait, That's is that Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Okay, so the day that this comes out, go check out Up Next Fighting. That's their club series. Which, yeah, Club UNF. That's if what it's you're called. confused, it's it's really just a fight card, but it's in a club type yeah. environment. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very very cool. So that's happening. What about you? Anything going on that we? Anything going on with me? Um, no, no, my life's boring. I hang out no? with my dogs. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, yeah, no, no, nothing for me at the moment. But for you, you have something going on this weekend. How excited are you? I'm very excited. I'm very nervous. 
I, I believe I will be doing some commentating for the Friday night Kumite Phi, which is the jujitsu event. Mm -hmm. So I, I should fly in on Friday. I think I'm going to go to the weigh-ins and stuff like that that will occur on the Friday for the MMA show on the Saturday. I will meet the fighters and stuff like that. You know, I want to take some notes. I don't know how I'm going to get to know all the BJJ fighters yet. Uh -huh. um, I have I have some information on who they are, so I'm trying to figure that out. I got to make notes. You know what I mean? Because if I'm commentating, I kind of want to talk a little bit about them. Yeah. More than just what I see. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. kind of right. like their background, where they're from. Yeah, like I don't want to just be going, well, there's Steve. He's got a nice beard. You know, like I don't think <laughs> you might want to know a little bit more. Uh, so I'll, I'll try and figure that out. I don't know how that goes, but I'm going to be with an experienced other commentator, of course. And I'm not going to be there the whole event. I'll be there a little bit. I'm very, very appreciative of Fight League Atlantic for letting me do this. Like this is a dream of mine. So for me to be able to do this is incredible. Thank you so much to Fight League Atlantic. I will do my best. I'm going to do my best to be obviously professional, but keep it a little bit fun. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you don't want people to get bored right with watching so you you, you do need to spice it up feel energetic feel the energy of the crowd um so i'll be there for that so that you know meet the meet the fighters do the weigh-ins try and get some notes do some stuff then the event on friday night i think then on saturday i think there's a tailgate party oh. saturday afternoon i believe that's the deal and I, I think so and then i'm going to be figuring some stuff out there and then for FLA 11, which is the MMA show, I believe I'll be doing some stuff in the crowd. So if you're still listening to this coming here from Ben Lee's uh, and you're there in person, I should be there. So I'll be there. I'll bring some, uh, I think I'll have some stuff to give away or something like that. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I will be there on site. I'm just very happy to be able to go to a live event, Rain, for goodness sakes. Like the energy of being in a crowd in an environment is so crazy. You're in this small town in Nova Scotia, I think it's something like I heard it's like 6,000 people in the whole town. And I think like they sell over a thousand tickets. Oh, wow. So like Im imagine like it's almost the whole town is saying it because you minus the babies and the old people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, Unless they bring them. I mean, technically you don't have to buy a ticket for a baby. So the babies oh, might be there. They might not even be counting baby attendance. So it's, it's <laughs> could be two thousand. I don't know what the baby population of Picto, Nova Scotia is, but uh, yeah. So that's that's what we're doing. Um, and then I will be back. Uh, then I fly back the Sunday back home, and then I see you. You know when we record on the Monday, hopefully Monday. with Chris the Crippler leaving. So oh my god, I'm so excited for that. So when you met him, very quickly before we go, when you met him, you got no sense that this guy was a killer? You had no idea this guy was a fighter? I mean, he looks like a menacing dude, though, no? Like, doesn't he look? No, because, like, I remember when I was just look when I was looking for the referees, because I like, every time I go to my events, I like yeah. knowing um, the referees, who the referees are, because just in case they end up switching, you know, and then they walk into the cage, and it's like, wait, it's supposed to be so-and-so, now I'm seeing Chris Levin. Oh, you're refing this one. All right, cool. You guys swap. Great. That way, I'm not just announcing random names, right? Random referee names. Right, and right, right. Who they really are. Um, mm -hmm. So I like, you know, approaching the referees, introducing myself. So that way, you know, we look eye to eye. It's like I recognize their face, and okay, I know you. Um, yeah, I just remember meeting him because I was looking. I got the list of my referees. Uh, oh, that was the first time I met Mike Bell too. It's like Mike Bell. Yeah. Hey. Where's Chris? Chris Wait, oh. which, you know, hold on. You know what's happened to Mike Bell since? Well, you know the I, whole drama, right? The whole 10 yeah. drama and he's all over the place. Yeah, we spoke We spoke about it on last week's podcast, which was a okay. great um, talk. But, oh boy, that dude is under some uh, public pressure, I would yeah, say. But know, good luck right. to Mike Bell. I stand by Mike Bell, goddammit. He's my friend. I would stand by him forever. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Rain. Yeah, so, so that's you, the first time I met Mike Bell. Uh, and then, you know, I had my notes and I was like, oh, where's uh, Chris, Chris Lieben? And they're like, oh, right there. And I met him, shook his hand. Um, and then, yeah, I had no clue at all until at some point um, during our last show, I got a text from my husband. He said, oh, that guy, Chris Lieben, he used to, you know, fight. And I was like, that's interesting. My husband knows Chris Lieben. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, cause my husband watches UFC and then, um, it's, to me, it was just like, oh, it's nice that he knew someone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after the fight or after the show was over, 
you know, I thanked everyone, la la la. My husband met up with me and then my husband walked right in front of me and then shook Chris's hand and he said, I could just see you, man. And then, he, yeah. and then he walked away and then I was like, he shook his hand. Do they know each other? And, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then now it makes sense to me. Oh, because he really respects him. You know, he's, you know. A legend, Rain. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, they talk about, uh, we'll get into this, you know, another day, but they talk about how like Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner was the thing that saved the UFC, blah, blah. I would say that Chris Lieben is right around there in terms of one of the individuals that truly <laughs> led the UFC into stardom, like from obscurity and from needing that boost like chris lieben was one of the personalities that put it on the map i mean and his fights are legendary like the dude is a killer crazy so i'm so excited to meet him that it, that is a total uh dream for me but uh yeah okay so i've got the fight league atlantic stuff here so september 29th the friday 7 p.m Kumite five yeah the the tailgate party uh presented by Coldstream and east coast financing September 30th. So that's the Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. So there's a big tailgate party going on. So come on out. And then the fights start at 7 on that Saturday as well. Two events, one weekend. Wow. Killing it. Wow. Rain, this is going to be incredible. If you are anywhere near the East Coast, anywhere near Picto, Nova Scotia, go drive there. Ben Lease is driving four hours to get there. I am Forest flying Lee. from Toronto to get there. If you live anywhere close, you have no reason not to get out there, buy a ticket, be on site, support these local fighters. These are local kids. Like, look at how nice Ben Lease is. How could you not want to get out there to buy a ticket to go cheer these kids on, support them in their dreams and their, their uh, you know, passion, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I love that you there. mentioned that because it's about, you know, supporting um, people who are following their dreams or supporting their passion. And it's it's good for, for um, you know, people like Ben um to see that there's people who support them because it keeps them going yeah you know it, it helps them you know like he said he's basically you know putting his body on the line right but i think what is very rewarding for ben and other fighters is that you know they see the people support they see people cheering for them and i think that pumps them out and that to them it makes them feel like okay you know what whatever whatever pain i go through right now the training cutting weight and all that it's all worth it yeah, exactly. Like nothing better to see a nice young gentleman like that with that kind of passion and drive and then get out there, spend some money, have a good, great ass time. If you've never been to fights, it's like some of the greatest things that you'll ever experience, like the passion and the excitement. Like it will be amazing. I promise you. And then if you're there and you see me, come say hello, because I'm going to be all alone, Rain. So like I got to I got to mingle and make some friends out here at nova scotia you know what i mean we'll be like, making a lot of friends for sure hopefully hopefully all right we have like merchandise to give away <laughs> oh yeah maybe <laughs> yeah i don't know what i'm doing there but uh i'm very lucky and very blessed to be able to work with fight league atlantic on this and partner up with them and do whatever it is i'm going to do so thank you so much um rain we're going to get out of here. If you're listening on audio, this will end the podcast, but um, I will put some videos up here that you can click on other great episodes of ours. Go check us out. Fight. <laughs> Jeez. I was going to say fight league Atlantic. Yeah. Go follow fight league Atlantic online as well, but we are fight insight podcast. Go check us out on all platforms. Rain. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for coming back. Oh, thank you for having me. Good luck. Okay. Bye.